you know, first of all, the idea that none of these so-called socialists are willing to do a power analysis, which read any, any revolutionary theory, read any one you like, pick your favorite, and it all says, first you've got to know who needs what before you can start to talk about how power is distributed. That is the fundamental. And they will do anything but, and I have said this on Twitter, I've said this in personal conversations, I have said this in other places, and they will dance around that all day long in this context. In any other context, they'll be like, oh, you're right. And of course, the black and brown people, woo, 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 BIPOC, woo, woo, woo. But they won't, if you say, mm -mm, do the actual math, you know, and this is where it is, then they don't want, they don't want to talk. It's real simple. All the stuff, I believe, it's come down to this. It Just follow the pattern. All the stuff that you would, if you were just blindfold, I'm going to give the workout to the people who have the, the most expertise. What are we talking about in the academy? We're talking about uh, all of the stuff around racial justice, all the stuff around American history, all, all the black history kind of stuff. That's going, now that's going to black folk. You nations given millions and billions of dollars to programs to help black and brown communities. All of that's now going to go to black folk because you have those folks have the expertise and the experience. White people are liberal. White people are going to lose a whole chunk, probably half of the white liberal middle class depends on having jobs they are not the most qualified for. That's just a fact. I mean, you think about, OK, so Ira Cass Nelson, I love him. His writing is great. He's a good speaker. Why is he not a but black he's a man? Racist. But he's a racist apologist, though. If you listen to him, though, he'd be like, well, for the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's perfect. We, 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 we tortured some folks. <laughs> <laughs> some folks got killed. That, that stuff happens. You know, we got to move forward. Because he's got his book deal. You, it, there are so many examples like that. Like, why does the Ford Foundation never fund anything that comes to anything with all the money they spend why can you not say and you know the the black community in georgia is has a, a, a median income of eighty five thousand a year per person and savings of you know a half a million dollars they should have done something with all that money it it's about being very carefully um gatekeeping and this is, I don't want to get too far into the um, non-native black American conversation. I just avoid that because I think it's not my business. But I do notice who gets these jobs and who doesn't get these jobs. And so I think it's, it's you just look at patterns. And like, to me, the simplest explanation is the one that makes sense. And I've just known too many people in the foundation circles, in the, in the academic circles, and it's like, you know, white liberals are real nice to you until you start being qualified for their job. Oh, like Rachel, is it Rachel Nichols from um, from oh. ESPN? Who, oh. who, who as soon as they were, it was time to uh, give the black chick who was more qualified, who was actually better at the job, the job. She was like, uh, I'm, I understand it's affirmative action, but you don't take my job. Hosting that meeting for me, so who did you do this assignment reporting out for the meeting? Because Jessica McAvoy was there. So, Jessica McAvoy was there. So, Maria, you're the host of the meeting. Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that, and um. I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your, like, crappy one-time record anniversary, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me. Like, <laughs> but this bitch is like married to like Katie Kirk's son or some shit. Like she's married into like a fucking right, right. anchor dynasty or some shit. Fuck you. Right, right. And, and the same thing with the bitch who was talking about she cussed out Denzel thinking that was going to be a win who's getting dragged on the fucking internet. Tony Vett did a video a couple years ago where they were talking about how Tone, Tone Talks and Yvette Carnell 
It's on the Breaking Brown channel where they're talking about how the Democratic Party is chasing the ghost of white voters. Listen, white people, you motherfuckers are divided. Most white people vote for Republicans. The only reason we're swinging to the other side is because of the blacks voting at 90% and those handful of your so-called people of color who fuck with you. Because only like 30, 40% of them go Republican too. That's the, if black, listen, to defeat you, I don't have to get black people from 90 to 40. I just have to get black people from 90 to 70 and you're done. If we don't come out and vote for you, you don't win. So quit talking to me about white people being the majority. It doesn't matter that they're the fucking majority. They are not the base in the winning vote. So until you do right by me, fuck you, fuck your socialism, fuck your programs, and get this straight. I am not against universal programs, but you're not going to keep pitting them against reparations. What you owe me is a debt for three genocides. Not discrimination, genocide. There's a difference. Nobody's asking for reparations because you called my grandma a nigger. Okay? Nobody's, that's not what we fighting for. Three genocides. Stop comparing me with people who just got here. And when you say, oh, well, there's rape and there's murder, then go get reparations from your own fucking country. Because they're the people who are letting that shit happen to you in your country. And if our country fucked up your country, your country got to sue this country. Have fun in the UN like our nigga asses are because we ain't getting shit from the UN neither. They had a whole fucking meeting about racism, reparations, and the UK and the US said, fuck you, we ain't coming. So everybody got to start holding their own nuts and doing their own shit. But at the end of the day, Black Americans are the base. And somebody told me like Biden's down like 18 points with Black people. 2022 is going to be a fucking blue fucking red wedding. There's going to be blue blood everywhere. And I'm here for it. Do I want this country to go right? No, but y'all are crazy. Y'all ain't doing nothing for me and my people except telling us to shut the fuck up and stay at the bottom. No, no, we're fine. Like we know how to survive with nothing. I'm about to start teaching my people how to survive to get through this. We've gotten through worse. We have survived everything. We survived fucking slavery. We survived fucking white racial terrorism. We survived fucking smallpox. We survived every fucking thing. I'm going to teach my people how to survive this. I hope y'all are teaching y'all because and y'all, the way this is playing, if you're not going to, if you don't want to team up with us, you don't want to do nothing with us, I don't care if you and your babies die. Fuck your kids. Fuck your kids. I mean that shit. If you don't care about me and my babies, fuck you and your kids. Like, oh, oh, but it's going to help everybody. No, we're still going to be stable poor because you have not listed anything that is going to make poor whites in Appalachia not be poor whites in Appalachia anymore. We got less money than them because at least they own the land that those trailers stand on. We ain't even got that. So we can rock. But if y'all want to play chicken, black people, we, we're built for this. We're stronger than you. It's in our blood. Struggle, pain. It's who we are. Y'all ain't built for this. All right, should we get back to the video? <laughs> or anybody got anything <laughs> else? I'm just saying, y'all ain't built for this. Y'all don't want this real fight because we we'll sit this one out. I think, I think for the first time in this country, I think black people should just sit one out. Let the whites fight it out. It would change everything. Let the whites figure it out. You know, let the whites and these new people that you keep bringing in, that you keep saying, you know, are the same as us and, you know, deserve everything that we deserve while you're giving us nothing. Let those people fight for you. We ain't doing it no more. I'm done being a mule. Shit, if I'm be a mule, I better get paid for that shit. Don't drug mules get paid? How black people run around here being mules and we don't get paid? We just the wrong kind of mute. Play this some more. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Ooh, I feel good. I'm so see, I'm not even like super, super being hyper tonight. Cause I feel calm and collected. I just feel like fuck y'all. Fuck you, fuck your baby, fuck your grandmama. Fuck them kids. 
Fuck the kids? Yeah. Fucking racist ass hey, grandmama. In fact, yeah, the bourgeois historians have only understood the past or known the past. The point, however, is to forget it. So right. I agree, however, that actually you can't just forget the past in the sense that, no, it's useful to know it. But when you're basing your claims to, in effect, justice now, to equality now, on bad things that have happened to you in the past, or bad things that have happened you to want your equity. Past, I mean, you know, think about it this way. You know, Marx, the whole goal, right? The Communist Manifesto is what? Is that, you know, it's 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 from each according to his needs, right? Um, or to each according to his needs, according you know, to his abilities. It's not what's become the kind of current mode of this. The current mode of this is like, you know, we're replacing the key to social justice, socialism, with a kind of, you know, unusually progressive and ambitious program of tort reform. You know, but Marx could never have imagined, right, that the author, someone who said from each according to his ability, you know, um, to each according to his needs, couldn't have anticipated the degree in which at this point right now, to each according to his ability to establish a right of restitution with respect to property stolen from his ancestors would become a battle cry, not of the revanchist right, which is always trying to reclaim stuff that was stolen from his ancestors, but the supposedly progressive left. And that's to me, you know, Adolf has started saying a lot a couple of years ago, both in our conversations, but also more generally, that um, what we need as a kind of as a kind of rallying point is just the idea of the public good. The one of the triumphs of neoliberalism is that it's more or less eliminated the idea of the public good from our public discourse. But the point of the public good is that you know when we want people to have jobs, we don't want them to have jobs that, because they satisfy some claims upon the past and their property rights in the past. We want them to have good jobs because it's part of the public. Okay. So Thank again, you. I'm, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to ask. Oh, oh, yeah, Gabriel, feel free to say stop anytime you can't take it anymore. But I'm going to ask the same question that I asked when we have bitch ass free Brian. When we have bitch, who the fuck is asking for this? Now, I know right. we've asked for like a streamlined version of uh, affirmative action. But what black people or people of color, as you fuckers like to use, are saying, hey, um, we just want black jobs. No white jobs, just black jobs. We just want some black jobs. Oh, no, no, no. I live in, I live in Watts and it's 65, 65% Hispanic and 30% black. But no, no, no. I just want black jobs. Fuck them. Like, who is saying this? Where, where are these conversations happening? In his head. I mean, he basically sounds like Archie Bunker, if you really decode what he said. <laughs> He's like, you know, these people, they come here and they want what I, I've worked hard for sitting in his, you know, comfortable chair. And there, he hasn't earned anything. Where's the proof? He has to start with some, the job I have, I earned, and you're trying to come for it and you don't deserve it. That's the, that's the subtext of everything he's saying. He's a straight up Archie Bunker dude who looks like Steven Spielberg. And that's really the only difference. I, to me, it's it's like um, this. It's really it goes right back to what Killmonger was saying before. It's this we're at the end of history, except he's literally then talking about like back over here is okay, but not over there. Like he's drawing a whole new map as if we're supposed to just agree with whatever he's saying. Like it's 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 like we're all friends here. They they recognize that it's performative. And the performance is, let's look at these people, talk about some stuff and talk about people we like, like Marx. And we're just all going to feel like we had kind of a socialist experience, whatever that means. I mean, I can't, it's, it's like, I was just talking to a friend of mine earlier today who was like, I'm not going to be able, she, she does work with the community organization. I'm not going to name any names, but she's like, these DSA white boys, I can't, I'm not going to work with these people anymore because of them. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, they don't, their agenda is just to talk about themselves and you can't get anything done. There's no doing anything. They are tools. They're the, you know, they're basically the, um, you know, they're the tools that, that what we would call, you know, rednecks and crackers were 50 years ago. They're just, mm -hmm. in, they're just mucking up the works while other people are advancing the real agenda. Sure. And again, I think it's this is pathology these people are insane if you listen to them and then you think about who they say they are they're like 
look, there's a, there's a liberal way to construct these gas chambers. And there's a progressive way to pick which Jews Facts. we're going to pick. Like, like, this makes sense. Facts. And these and these gas chambers are more humane because instead of killing you in an hour, they kill you over the course of twenty years. But over that right. twenty years, we give you just enough food to keep meat on your bones, and we let you have a refrigerator and a stove. So you're in a first world country, so you should be happy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Mud, you got anything? You've been quiet. Yeah, I mean, uh, this. Well, they talk about this as if like uh, we are under some Marxist government, like we have to adhere to their understanding of Marx, um, but uh, they have not achieved their goal of get, actually gaining power to be saying anything of the sort. I mean, we, we live under the American government, which gives us the right to uh, uh, petition the government for redress. I mean, that's the First Amendment. Uh, and if we're gonna have a conversation about how this affects the public good, um, knowing that the government can be held accountable for violating your rights is, is essential to the public good. I mean, it, it's kind Mark, of like, I'm sorry? Oh, I just said it's at the heart of it. Yeah, and it's kind of like what Josiah is saying. Like, if you're just saying we're going to erase history, like, then you're just giving like the government free reign to violate your rights, and as long as they they right. uh, ignore your issue long enough, eventually they could say, "Well, that's the past." <laughs> so, no, we're not going to allow this shit to you know to go this this way. We're not going to agree to this, um, and like like I've been saying, like. They, they're just not paying attention to what is really happening in our politics. They're living in some fantasy world because they need the black vote and they aren't getting it. And it's obvious why they aren't getting it because they're not speaking to our issues because they want to ignore our issues. Right. That's all I got. Well, for me, this kind of feels like Southern strategy-ish because I, I, I'm seeing this consistent push. It is. It is. No, it is. It's just a different kind of dog whistle. Keep going. I'm gonna put in that. I'm gonna pull in that fucking video. But it's the same thing. You can't say nigga, nigga, nigga. And now it's not force busting or states' rights. It's white fragility. It's reparations. Mm -hmm. It's race reductionism. Go ahead, please, Josiah. That's exactly kill it. Kill. it. It's it's these dog whistles on the left that I'm I'm picking up on, and it's like basically they're saying you don't have to listen to those Negroes. We can do this without them. We'll give them some platitudes, but that's it. The be the, mo the only thing we ask of you is don't be rude. But we will not do anything to meaningfully change the give racial me that, hierarchy. Give me that Robin D'Angelo nice racism that she's talking about that you motherfuckers hate. Exactly. And none of you mother none of you people have read the book. I get really frustrated with everyone who says, oh, I've seen a few excerpts. Why is it that Matt Taibbi and the rest of you clowns, you know who you are, I've only read excerpts. But y'all read Das Kapital and all this other stuff, though. Y'all had time for that. <laughs> they didn't read that shit either. <laughs> <laughs> it's all clip notes. And one more thing I wanted to ask, like, why are we talking about Marx if history doesn't matter? Isn't he dead? Man. And he was a whole fucking racist. So can we stop having to deal with old ass racists? So we gotta, I gotta deal with, I gotta deal with fucking 19 year old racists and dead ass racists too. Y'all killing a bitch. Like y'all killing me fucking for real. God like, damn. Wait people, Marx is not as impressive as you think he is. He's really not. He's only saying the same basic bullshit that black people have been telling you since we got here. Hey, slavery is wrong. <gasps> what do you know? The people who do the work should get the, to get the proceeds from, from their no, labor. No, but he always saw us as the bottom cast. Ask Mud. Mud, didn't he always see us as being like a bottom-based oh, no. kind of labor? I know, but like my point is like white people needed to go to Marx for these ideas. And I'm like, your fellow Americans have been telling you this the whole time. It's a hot mess. Don't hit the same when you're black. 
That's the bottom line. Look, this is all, I mean, so much to me, so much of this is about employment, is about the jobs that people have. So these people want to be in the room of approved intellectuals. And, you know, I see this all the time. I'm, I'm within walking distance of the University of Chicago. This is, this is what is, it happens all the time in these spaces. None of us are invited. You know, none of us are going to ever be invited. But for these people, they can say whatever. They're like, blah, 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 Marx, blah, 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 Sartre, whatever. The important thing is you look at the this frames and you're like Asian lady, uh, Jewish looking guy, uh, other Vietnamese lady to be more specific. Her people literally came here after Vietnam. And again, y'all can be mad at me and I'm going to keep saying this, but these anti-black people of color, y'all, this does not make me pro-immigration. I'm not going to go deeper, but like. No, if y'all keep bringing in racist people of color, I'd rather deal with the racist whites. Like, I can't fight on all fronts. Well, here's it. And the black. Yeah. Let's not get no, deep into right. it. No, you're right. No, and I'm not. I just say this. What, what that makes me think about is, I, and I just have to say this out loud to remind myself, this conversation is, is really important. It also has to, that we have to keep saying to whoever's watching this, the foundation is reparations. The, the, the place you have to start from to really peel this onion back and understand why, because we're at where we're, we're at through, I'm here because of literally years of education where I've had the sense or the good accident, however it happened, hit my head at a young age to listen to black folks. And so I have some idea of what we're talking about and I continue to listen. So I, I have some sense that you have to start with redress if we if we form a company and and you're like where'd you get this money to start this company and i'm like oh i murdered my uncle and i took this from his house it's like okay you know what i don't know that i want to start a company with you you you're like murdering your uncle and stuff that doesn't seem like a good idea this the the corporation that is this country is is based on criminal behavior we are a criminal enterprise you will not get different results from a structure built on a rotten foundation. And that's not a metaphor, it's true business management. I mean, whatever you're into, uh, re religious organizations. Oh, they about to bring, that, they gonna bring that up. You got ahead of us, Gabriel. They about to bring that oh, up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting conversation worked up. By saying that this country is built on, a, oh, here, hold on, John's calling, hold on. Okay. Well, I'm just saying reparations first, and that's kind of all. I, but not just about money. It's about it's an intellectual foundation as well, and that's why you got to listen to uh, Josiah. It's like you begin, you know, begin, don't begin with Marx. Begin with your neighbor, because that's actually how this works. It does it, how you don't you don't stop crime in your neighborhood by calling the police. You stop crime in your neighborhood by going next door and saying what's going on with this crime? Like, we got to figure this out. You don't, your parks don't get better because you call your alderman and say, I wish, or counselor or whatever, and say, I wish the parks were better. You, you get together. People solve these problems together. There's no outside force that comes in and fixes anything. We have to demand everything. And our knowledge comes from each other. The knowledge does not come from above a faraway place, somebody who's been dead for 400 years. It's, it's the knowledge we have, but we're afraid to listen to each other and trust each other. And I understand why some people are, are afraid to trust other people, but the problem with white people is we don't trust people because we have a pathology. We have a psychological problem. We have a rupture in our ability to have empathy for each other. And because of what we've done, we don't trust anybody else. And it sort of makes sense when you think about it. Like if you've gone around and stolen and murdered and and massacred other people, of course you have a bad idea of human nature. It makes sense logically, but it doesn't actually make sense in the whole universe of human beings because most human beings aren't this crazy.